wood turners. I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to talk wood turning 101 tools chapter one because this is going to be a two-parter. Now I did this one a couple of days ago. Edited it and put it up on the internet. I don't like it. The, a whole lot of things I don't like. So we're going to do it again. And remember if you want to learn about tools all you got to do is watch. Now you may think a wood turner that's fairly accomplished, has turned just about everything that he could want to turn, has got just about every tool he could imagine, would it use 10 tools a day, 12 tools a day? Not really. When I'm out turning, I'm going to use the tool that's the most available or convenient, the tool that will get the job done and the tool that will provide me with the least sanding finish that I can. So I have a small group of tools I work with on a regular basis. We're going to start with those tools. Now there might be a little jump in the video here where I'm showing you something and it doesn't look exactly how I'm holding it because I'm going to shoot it again in a little bit and edit it in to show you what we're talking about. Hope you can get the right concept because tools well, you got the lathe, you got the wood, you need tools. Let's talk. We're going to start with a roughing gouge. Roughing gouges are made to bring lumber down two sides. Roughing in, okay? It's just like a, a hatchet in the forest or an axe in the forest. It's not made to plain wood, it's made to rough it in. But they work really, really fine if you have them sharpened correctly and you use them correctly. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. This roughing gouge, this is about three quarters across right here. And I believe it's called the one inch, only because there's no standards to this. Okay? Now, this is made by Hamlet, really good line available, I think, at Craft Supplies. Now, I sharpen it to about a 45 degree angle. We'll get into that when we sharpening. And I sweep the wings back a little bit, which means it's Mine won't come straight up on the sides, they'll sweep back a little. This tool by Hamlet works really good for that. It's got about the right length handle to where you can get a good choke up on it. And remember, you're not going to be double handing this tool. You still have to control the tip of it because it's not that large. But roughing gouges as roughing gouges go. A three quarter to one inch across the, the top up here, that's where you want to start. You get those big, big boys and you tend to take too much of a bite. So let's start small, all the way through. And as you need to grow, you can grow. Remember, you can turn big wood with little tools, but you can't turn little wood with big tools. We're talking gouges. I'm going to go with what's traditionally called an Ellsworth. This is a deep fluted bowl gouge. Deep fluted because it doesn't have a pan. It's got a V or a modified U. It's either going to come straight down to a tight point or it's going to have a U-shape to it that's got some shoulders on it. And that will vary in size. And what I'm talking about here is a, a, a sharp V like this gives you a tip that's a sharp tip. You round it out some, but you get one that starts to open up a little bit and give you a nice bottom and you get a better cutting edge on the front. Now, one thing about these tools Everybody and their brother's making it because it's not a hard tool to machine out. This V is critical. If this V has got a bump in it, you end up with a bump on your edge, not a depression. If it's got a depression, you get a notch in your edge. So before you buy it, you want to take a really hard look at it and see if that is machined nice and smooth all the way through. If not, you're going to want it at a discount because you're going to have to remove that steel and true it up. Or every time you sharpen it, you're going to either hook or a, or a notch, and both of them will hurt your turning. You'll be doing terrible work, and you can blame it on your tools. This has got a one half inch diameter shaft, and it's about three eighths of two to seven sixteenths across. Again, no standards. It's a deep V. This is a little bit smooth, but it's nice. This is a real Ellsworth tool. 
I made my own handle for it a couple of years ago and actually copied somebody's work. But it's a nice tool. It's a good size for a heavy gouge. It said heavy. It's only half inch. Now, let's get off the heavy one and get to my most favorite tool. A long time ago I bought a 3 8 yank Ellsworth gouge that had a, about a quarter inch flute and it was actually the sweetest tool I ever had. Used it for everything. Wore it down. It was too short to put back in the grinder. So I bought a replacement a year or two ago from one of the mail order houses. This is the worst piece of machining I've ever seen. Down in here I've got ridges. Now I have taken whetstone and the rounded diamonds and worked a lot of them out back another inch or two. But that'll show you what happens when you buy discounted tools. I wanted something I could, put back in, could put back into my Coca Bolo handle and would work really well. So I just heated it up, put a pair of vice grips on it, eased it out, cleaned up that shaft with a 3 8, put a little epoxy, and put the new one back in. Wasn't for that flaw, this would be the most awesome tool in my shop. I'm, trying out a new one right now to see if I can get a good replacement. If I find a source for them, I will rat, rat them out. I'll let you know. But, this is a good tool. Again, it's a deep V. This is a little bit flatter on the bottom, which gives me a little more tip. Which is good if I'm passing down through the bottom of a bowl. I'm riding that tip out, and then I roll it over and change to the side. Same thing if I'm roughing out. Riding the tip and rolling to the side. It's a really good tool for that. The 3 8 shaft is the most optimal in my shop. And I've turned big things. I've used it to, to shape up a cowboy hat. Now, one more gouge. This is another sweetheart. Now, i got to show you something on this gouge. Can you see the flat spot right here? Yeah, let me see if I can turn it. You see that flat spot? Yeah, no, not this flat spot. That flat spot. Okay, flat spot on the one nice to talk about that flat spot on my nose. Come on. This flat spot. This is a fingernail gouge, detail gouge. Now, this is looks like the, a lady's fingernail that's been shaped to a nice, even soft point. You see that nice soft point? Let's see if we get it up there. Oh, we drop out the light. Okay. This has got the LF. LF Ellie Evisera double grind, which means about an eighth of an inch tip and then relief behind it. This will go down the inside of boxes, across the bottom of bowls, back into the top, go into the go way down towards the chuck, give you a little detail, plane off a final cut on something that's sweet. This little thing's a whole lot more than it looks like. And the reason it's flat, I'm running out of, of groove and I don't want to throw it away. So I keep moving the flat back more and more and more. That's where my, my, my jig holds it because this gets sharpened in the 247 Ellsworth rig on the Blackhawk. Yeah, two inches out, four inches from the wheel, seven inches, the whole works. Seven, four inches down, seven inches in the wheel. Get my brochure, you'll understand it. But this little tool is great for that. And I do that double step sharpening. And it helps a lot. You don't have, when you turn in a corner or going, you don't have all that extra steel. I have a video on that called Fingernail Gouge. So, this is another sweet one, and I'm looking for the replacement. This is a Ellie Avasara package, and it came out of Packard. And I don't know if they have any more or if they're still handling the line. But it's about, I think they call it a 10, 3 8 or 10 millimeter uh, fingernail gouge. Really nifty little tool for detail work. And detail work can be a bowl this big going down across the bottom to clean up where your footprint was when you rechuck it. And you have to get in and plow across and then go back out and lift the center and detail that foot and come around and put it All that right there. One tool does all that work. Cleans it all up. You're gonna, you play with it, you're going to love it. Now, are you ready? I mean, are you ready? Because now we're going to talk skew. That scared you, didn't it? Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, 
especially you rookies. Scoop! Yeah, I saw that. Made you jump again, huh? Yep. Scoop! It's not to be anything to be feared of. It's just the tool. You know what you're afraid of? You don't understand how to use it. So let me tell you what to get first. Let's go to Robert Sorby and get an oval shaped. Oh, yeah, you like that, huh? Oval shaped skew. It's got a little bit of a flat bottom but not sharp corners. This is a rectangular skew with rounded corners, top and bottom. It'll do the same thing, but I'm telling you about that three quarter inch sorby because it's a sweet little tool for you guys to get started with. And they all sharpen about the same. Now, this one, I've got this angle sharpened to match the jaws on my chuck. So when I'm shaping up wood to re-chuck it, it's, and I got a video on that, on how to do it. But my preference for a skew, my smaller, lighter, three-quarter inch of sweet. This is a little bit larger. It's a, almost an inch across on the face here, right, right across here. I sharpen it to a straight edge, not the bull nose or the, the beak, I think they call it. I keep the bottom nice and clean and detailed out. Uh-oh, there's a burr right there. So I would take 320 grit paper with a little WD on it and rub that burr off. Yeah, because when I'm plain and cut, if I got a burr here, guess what's going to be on the wood? A bump. That's right. It all echoes, so you take it off. And it also helps clean up a little rust, a little glue, makes it look pretty. You're really interested in this pretty stuff, right? Okay. But, got to keep them clean. Same thing with your gouges and anything else that slides along, anything that slides along the tool rest. With slides and slides, has got to be clean. Otherwise, when they bump or skip or you have to change your muscle memory, you're going to get a mark. This is a three-quarter inch or 19 millimeter skew. Now, it's a great little tool. It's square. I think for learning, you'll find the oval lets you get in and out of the turn on, turn off thing with less body mechanics and a little more muscle memory, and you might be happier with it. But it's a tool worth checking out. And the last one in the first part I'm going to cover is going to be a scraper. Yeah, I had to let you calm down after that skew experience. We're going to talk scraper, and you're going to think I've finally lost my mind. With all the scrapers that are out there, and I probably have 10 on the rack over there. I have Ray Key's box scraper. I have somebody else's, a Henry Taylor scraper. I have um, a Robert Sorby big blade scraper. But day in and day out, when I'm going to shape up something or take some bumps off or trim up something, I reach for Old Faithful. Yeah, if you can't see it, that's Craftsman. This is a three-quarter inch wide Craftsman round nose scraper, half inch round. Yep, $19 at Sears. Bought this a long, long time ago, single. I saw it on a rack and said, hey, I need a scraper. It works great. Now, I modified it and put a little negative rake on it. Negative rake just means that I brought the cutting tip down so the angle of the cut is different. I'm not I don't have a 90 degree plowing into the wood to take that scrape off. I have more like a 60 degree, which is softer and easier on the wood. And all I did was take it to my grinder, lay it up on the side, and grind off the top a little bit. It's amazing. You went and bought a negative rake scraper and you have a grinder or a sander? Do it yourself. Then when you sharpen it, you put it face down, make one pass across the wheel, pull the wire around the corner, and you have it again. Second change I made was, can you see this down the side? I think you can. I sharpened the side. Yeah, this is also a box scraper. I can go down the inside of a box and clean up the sidewall, put the round in the bottom, and clean up. It's great. It cleans up little things and everything. And you can sharpen the side. So this cheap high-speed steel tool from Sears is an awesome little scraper and I have many. I have big blade scrapers who are going through the inside of bowls. I have a half inch wide with a square corner on it for going down in small boxes. 
scrapers are scrapers are scrapers. If you can get a block of high speed steel, you can make your own for almost any purpose you need. But when you get started looking for something you're comfortable with, this might be the one you want to start with. And oh yeah, when I use it on a jar, on a jar box, I've also softened this corner right here so I can roll it up on the edge and pull it around and it doesn't read the tool rest. A couple of things you can do to make these tools custom fit. Now, I've covered five or six of my favorites. I've got a few more, some that I make, some that you can make. And these are all tools that you will need when you're working in the shop. A couple of things I gotta say. If you modify a tool, don't make it unsafe. If you change something, make sure it's safe. And if you put a handle on the tool, if you're just a little bit iffy about it, don't use that tool. Make another handle. That's it. Now, let me see. Oh, I got a handful more I still got to go through. So, why don't you pour another cup of coffee and join me for part two. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan, and normally you find me making shavings. But we're going to talk part two of tools next. Okay boys, out of the way.